Now please welcome Head of Industry, Strategy, Travel and Hospitality, Adobe, Julie Hoffman. Good morning. I'm Julie Hoffman, Head of Industry Strategy for Travel at Adobe. It is an absolute honor to be here amongst this vibrant travel community of Skift and to share a little bit of the MGM Resorts International case study. A couple years ago, I was walking on the streets of Oslo, Norway, and it was raining. Not just a little bit, I and mean, that might be surprising, but everywhere, like it was shooting up at me from the sides, from the back. The umbrella I was holding was pretty much quite useless. But it turned out to be one of the most memorable experiences of my life. And not because Oslo surpassed any city that I'd ever seen, but I had the opportunity to have a personal tour from somebody who grew up there. He showed me Oslo through his eyes. And so Oslo became an experience. And I didn't have to do any work. We are entering into the new era, the golden era of travel. An era that at a click of a button or a tap of the screen, you can transform yourself anywhere you want, however you want, wherever you want. Travel is now completely accessible. The globe has shrunk, and we are in a new space. It is literally at your fingertips. For anything, the bucket list, maybe some other cultural experience that you would like to have. What we know from Adobe's digital travel insights and trends is that people travel to have experiences. And it's no surprise, digital is an enabler. It allows you through self-service to check in, to do home away from home media solutions, and a boatload of other capabilities that helps to reduce that friction of travel. But travel brands who are in the space, many of them that are great, are starting to move beyond those transactional movement, movements. They are starting to up-level the experience. And they're starting to bring back those moments of joy, like I experienced in Oslo. And the interesting thing is that people are willing to provide data to replicate that experience of a personal tour. And although technology is an enabler to great experiences, vision and strategy and the ability to know what that person wants and what that experience should look like is the big differentiator that we're seeing. I had the opportunity to work at MGMO Resorts International for almost six years as part of their digital transformation. And it is with great pleasure and uh, a personal, should I say, huge, huge fan of this person who's going to come on stage and share the journey of driving this vision for the company. CXO, please join me in welcoming you to the stage, Lily Tomovich. Well, thank you and good morning, everyone. I am thrilled to be here to have a few minutes to speak to you about personalization in a non-personalized world. So what the heck does that mean? I'm gonna share a little bit about that with you, and more importantly, I'm going to share um, what MGM Resorts is working on from a personalization perspective. Now I apologize because my conference monitors are back there and I can't read them so well, so I may occasionally have to turn this way to see what, what the slide is. Okay, so this slide I think most of you are very, very familiar with, and certainly as a marketer, I've been obsessed with this chart here, which really talks about the entire digital ecosystem that as a marketing person, I wanna figure out how do I leverage, how do I drive innovation using digital to deliver a better guest experience, a more engaged customer, and then of course, hopefully, it ends up driving greater differentiation for our business and greater profitability. And so, out of this amazing uh, digital ecosystem that we have had the privilege to work with for the last 10, 15 years, there's been some great innovations. Who can complain about, you know, signing in from your pajamas at home for your airline flight. It's hard to believe, you know, 10, 15 years ago we couldn't do that. And then, of course, if you can't do that at home, you can do it at the airport. And then, of course, there's our websites, and thank you to our Adobe friends for helping us with our, our digital uh, ecosystem, 
where all of our guests can pretty much book anything they want from entertainment, spas, restaurants, really simple, self-serve. Next, of course, is, is pharmacy. Does anybody go into a pharmacy anymore to reorder their prescriptions? Probably not. Then we look at banking, right? Can't remember the last time I stepped into a bank to do complicated banking. It's not just removing funds, but actually complicated transactions I can now do through my app. And then, of course, it's amazing, but I've noticed the last year in Las Vegas when I go to the doctor, <coughs> excuse me, I don't even have to speak to anybody. There's kiosks that ask me to check in. And then, of course, last but not least, I think uh, all of this started with the somewhat dreaded IVR systems many, many years ago. And I'm sure if we thought about all the countless minutes we have all sat on hold listening to that music and hearing our menu options may have changed, we probably want to pull our hair out. But that was really the start of automation and digitalization of the guest experience. And so why did we do this? Well, it was a pretty simple reason. From a company perspective, there was, there was um, rewards, financial rewards. We were being more efficient, and we were driving effectiveness in our business by leveraging all of these digital assets. From a consumer perspective, we said, you know what? Let's put the consumer in control. Let's have the consumer decide how and when they want to bank. Let them create their own you know, methodology of how they want to engage with us. And let's make the process very simple for them. So it seemed like a win-win. The question becomes, have we gone too far? Have we allowed digital technologies to become the be-all and the end-all for the guest experience? And in fact, should we sort of rebalance that with more human connection? So that's something I've been personally thinking a lot about. I think the pendulum has swung too far, and we have to figure out the balance. So I was uh, reading recently a study by Accenture Global Consumer Pulse study that they did in 2016. And in fact, their study showed that 83% of US consumers prefer dealing with human beings. Not surprised. I don't know how many times I've called somebody or was looking for help with something that I was purchasing that I'd much rather speak to a live agent. Next, 45% of US consumers are willing to pay more for better service. Again, not surprising. And then the last few things I wanted to point out from this study that I think are very relevant is, first of all, that companies that have placed too much reliance on digital technologies are facing what they call humanless customer service. Think about that, humanless customer service. And certainly in the business all of us are in, that's a dangerous territory to be in. The next one, apply, um, ability for customers to interact with other human beings significantly increases their overall satisfaction with your brand. Not surprising, right? They want engagement. We crave engagement with other human beings. Critical. The third piece, and I think the most important piece, is that we must, as organizations, enable consumers to more easily move between digital and human seamlessly. So it can't be I'm just on an app that only provides me a digital solution. There's no way for me to ever connect with a real person. And you'll hear a little bit about what we're doing with chatbots to actually address that. So if we don't address it, as an industry, this industry and many other industries around the world, what are we at risk of? We're at the risk of the lost art of human connection. Now, I don't know how many of you have children, but I have an adorable 13-year-old, and I can tell you I worry about that for her. And I keep telling her, you know, this whole social world, you, you don't even know how to connect with people anymore. But I realized the other day when I was working on this presentation, this is exactly the world we all live in. We are at risk for the lost art of human connection. So I think the pendulum needs to re be re uh, rebalanced, that we need to find how we can engage people, have human connection with technology to create those wow experiences. So what I'd like to do is share with you a little bit about MGM Resorts. This is what we call our manifesto video that we just released and actually it's running uh, on television, but it really talks about who is MGM Resorts as a brand, what do we do, and most importantly, what role do we play in the lives of consumers? And you will see in this, I hope you will see, that everything we do is so critical upon human engagement. 
And so our big task is how do we leverage digital to drive better guest experiences and be a better enabler to uh, guest experience, but never ever lose sight of how important consumer and engagement and interaction is. So I'll play this video now. Great, fun, right? I know I have some fellow MGMers here and sometimes we pinch ourselves because we can't believe we do that for a living. And in fact, we're running our, our first brand campaign right now and we've been getting so many calls from people, a bunch of the executives have been getting calls saying, you guys don't own all those properties. Those aren't all your restaurants. Those aren't all your places and pools and yes, everything there is ours. And so the point being, we are in the experience business, and experience needs to be delivered by real people, and technology needs to be the enhancer to it. So I want to share with you our guest service strategy that we've been working on for the last year, and it really makes that point that human connection plus technology as an experience enhancer, not as a substitute, but an experience enhancer, is what's gonna allow us to wow our guests and deliver amazing experiences. And so I thought I'd share with you, I have um, a few minutes left, so I thought I'd just share with you some of the things that we're working on at MGM Resorts to see if we can do a better job of marrying the two and so that we don't find ourselves over-rotating simply at, by looking at digital solutions for all of our guest experiences. So the first one I'd like to share is we've developed new guest service standards um, and guest recovery standards that really focus on guest engagement, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. The second is we are um, carrying forward and expanding our high-touch one-to-one relationship. And so I grew up in the database marketing era of where people talked about one-to-one, -one, and then they talked about one-to-many, but that's not one-to-one. -one. When we talk about one-to-one, -one, I mean old-school one-to-one. I mean John calls Mary and we have a relationship and he's my guy for the rest of the trip. So that's how the casino business works. Our high-end casino guys, They've got their person, they call, text, we arrange the, 
G5 to go pick them up, we put them in the mansions. That's a one-to-one -one relationship that has been successful for us for years. And yes, they use technology to communicate, but we would never send them an email saying, call 1-800 to book your next trip. So we decided, well, why are we just doing that for the casino customers? We better start doing that for all of our high-value customers. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that and some of the successes we've seen. And the last point is, we really wanted to make sure that we injected human interaction with our technology platform, the chatbot. So a lot of our competitors, some of you may be in the room and certainly in Las Vegas, have launched chatbots, but we actually don't think they were launched necessarily the right way and are not necessarily giving guests the interaction they were hoping for. So I'll share some of that with you. So the first thing I wanted to share with you is you saw our brand platform and campaign is titled Welcome to the Show. So we wanted to make sure that everything we do aligns with the show acronym. So these are some guest service standards that, by the way, we trained 77,000 employees on this. We want to make sure that engagement with customers is everybody's job to do. And so a lot of time was spent on guest service standards and saying people engagement, never forget that. The second piece, oh, I should give you this example. This is a really super fun example of how our employees are really taking that to heart. So somebody went on Bellagio.com, they booked a room, and in the comments section, they said, I like a rubber ducky in my room. That's it, that's all we knew. They wanted a rubber ducky, we didn't know if it was for a child, we didn't know what this was about, but one of our agents decided, you know what, I'm gonna wow this guest. Not only am I gonna get him a rubber ducky, but this rubber ducky's gonna go on one hell of a trip through Bellagio. So we sent the gentleman a note, and it said, good morning, Joshua. I want to start by apologizing. While we were able to get a rubber ducky for your room, we were not able to stop him from enjoying himself before you got here. He stopped by the fountain, and then we had a whole collage of everywhere that this rubber ducky went. He went to the pool, he went to Lago, he went to see Cirque du Soleil, and then of course we packaged this up and left it in this gentleman's room. And you can imagine he was blown away and sending us notes and tweeting um, and all kinds of social engagement, but that's an example of looking for the little opportunities to really wow the guest and give that personalization back that, that is missing so much these days. So a second example, which we're really excited and I'm quite proud of, is our guest service recovery program. So for all of you in the hospitality business, you know we try really hard to be perfect. And I can tell you, we try, try, try. We have the you know, challenge because of our sheer scale. We have on average 5 thousand hotel rooms. MGM has 7,000 hotel rooms. So you can imagine average day for us is 3,000 people checking in and out. So managing that scale uh, is, is a big task and occasionally we screw up, something goes wrong. And so what we decided as part of this is we didn't want to put the onus on the guests to figure out how to get their toilet that keeps running fixed or their air conditioning. We decided, you know, normally you call the front desk, you're on hold, there's this going on, that going on. We said, what if all 77,000 employees walking around the resort all the time could fix any problem? That they had a hotline that they could call, that somebody was gonna answer and immediately execute against this VIP request. So l people literally have little pocket cards. You could be working a casino floor. You could be cleaning one of our facilities. You could be a maid, you could be a cook. And if you're walking through our property and you run into somebody who's having a bad moment, your job is to stop, engage them, listen to their story, pick up your phone, you've got your call, make a call, make it happen. Simultaneously, all 77,000 employees also have the ability to give what we call a um, guest recovery certificate. And that certificate allows every single employee to comp a guest who maybe had a frustrating experience. So they might want to give them two free drinks at the bar or a pass to one of our buffets. And when we rolled this out in one of our test, um, test markets, uh, we were kind of worried. We said, oh my God, 77,000 employees are going to be walking around with the ability to give dr comp drinks and all kinds of things. I mean, the numbers are going to blow up. I don't think we can do this. The reality is quite the opposite. People felt so empowered. They thought, wow, this company trusts me with certificates and I'm, I'm a janitor or I'm a casino slot guy or I'm a front desk agent. I could be working by the pool and now I have the ability if somebody's had a really bad day to give them two free drinks or there's, you know, there's six, seven different things they can choose from. 
and we found that there has been absolutely no abuse to the system, and people are actually excited, they feel valued, and they feel empowered. Okay, moving on. So I touched briefly about the one-to-one. -one. I talked a little bit about, it's been an incredibly successful program for us with our high whales, as we call them in the casino business. But we wanted to extrapolate that with all of our guests who aren't the high whales, but those folks who come regularly to Las Vegas and they spend a lot of money on concerts, shows, spas, you name it. And so our goal here was really how do we enhance the knowledge of these folks from a personal perspective, and then how do we personalize the guest experience? And we found when we did our tests that those guests who actually now had one person that they could call and was basically their buddy for their trip, we saw that their spend went up four times the previous year. So they, and you know, I talked to some of our hosts. These people will call them, text them at two in the morning. Hey, I'm trying to get into Hakkasan. Can you get me in? Or geez, I'm trying to get into Jean Georges Steakhouse and it's totally booked. Can you get me in? By the way, I want to arrange this. We take care of everything, but it is truly a one-to-one -one relationship. It is not email substitute. So um, that has been working really, really well. Um, and this is just an example of a, a high-value customer that was coming in. He was celebrating his 75th birthday. He was a longtime customer of um, Aria, actually. And so we found out all kinds of information about their favorite beach house location. So we got a basket from, I think, Martha's Vineyard. We found out their favorite beach drinks. We did that. We knew they were both born and raised in Texas. So we had a cake built by our master pastry chef in the shape of, of Texas. And we had all kinds of other little cute things to acknowledge their 75th birthday and, and what loyal guests they have been to us. So the last thing I will mention is just around the chatbot strategy, and we've been talking a lot about this because we want to make sure, again, that if we do a chatbot for booking rooms or shows, that it's a fantastic experience. I've tried many, and they're not so great. You get frustrated, the, the AI isn't there, so they haven't had enough time to figure out what the customer actually wants, and then the whole thing kind of dissolves, and then you try and find live chat, and you can't find live chat, then you get on the phone, and then you try and book it online, so it becomes a little, a little onerous and not the best experience. So what we have decided, and we're piloting this fall, but we're gonna combine, uh, combine chatbot AI with live agent, and it will be seamless to our guest. So what happens is I go on, mandalaybay.com to book a room, I start engaging. The chat bot is obviously learning through, through AI, and it will be able to provide simple questions, what are you looking for, et cetera, et cetera. But the minute a question comes that there's a hesitation, the chat bot does not know where this is going and how to complete it, a live agent seamlessly takes over and finishes a transaction. So the goal here is to leverage technology, as I said, with human engagement to make sure that we can have a perfect guest uh, guest engagement and happy guest. And so that's kind of our uh, philosophy on that. So I think I'm out of time, which is great because I have one last slide. So if I could leave you with just a few, few final thoughts. Number one is do not underestimate the value of in human interaction. I know we're also busy trying to figure out digital and, and where we can take it and how we can leverage it. I am too, we are too, but human interaction, the business we are in, is so fundamentally important that we must never forget. The second is use technology as a guest experience enhancer, not a substitute. I really believe that. I've seen too many brands that try and use it as a substitute and that will fail. It must enhance the guest experience while still allowing human connection interaction. And lastly, provide consumers the ability to move seamlessly between digital and human interaction. I think that's key, allow consumers to flow through, make their choice. If they can do what they need to do through digital, terrific. If they can't, allow them to seamlessly get a live agent or speak to somebody to resolve uh, their issues. So with that, I um, thank you for your time.